Hello there, YouTube. I am Jax Colon, and thank you for joining me on this chilly morning here in uh, Brooklyn. This is going to be my review of Dr. Zhivago, directed by David Lean, who I just, um, who actually, ironically, I've gotten into recently because he also directed Lawrence of Arabia, which I just saw for the first time, and I love. Lawrence of Arabia is fucking incredible. But I didn't realize until the DVD actually came here that it was directed by the same guy. And uh, like, like Lawrence of Arabia, it's epic. It comes in at a whopping three hours and 20 minutes. So it did take me a couple sittings to get through it, just because it's uh, super long. I gotta say, I did not like it as much as Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, obviously they're both in a very similar style. It's, it's very, the it's a theatrical type of filmmaking by every standard, by the, the dialogue and the acting style. Not so much the way it's shot, but um, I would not be surprised to learn that uh, David Lean had a theater background. It's the story of this doctor, Dr. Uh, Yuri uh, Zhivago, who gets caught up in the Bolshevik Revolution. And that was initially what drew me to it when I read the little synopsis and then I found out that it was uh, during the Bolshevik Revolution. I was like, all right, well, sign me up. <laughs> um, so he, you know, he has a wife and uh, he also falls in love with a you know a mistress, but it's a true love story, and he's truly torn between these two women, which I kind of find refreshing. It's something that I always uh, seem to get angry about in movies. Whenever um, you know a man falls in love with two women, you know he's just an asshole. He's just you know he's just being a typical guy, you know. But if a woman is in love with two men, then we're supposed to sympathize. It's like oh gosh, she's got such a choice to make. You know, and I, I, I'm sure the inequities as far as men and women go is definitely lopsided uh, <laughs> toward one way. So I shouldn't really complain about that one thing. But it always pissed me off, you know, if a guy, a man couldn't possibly be in love with two women. But in this, mo this movie, he clearly is. You know, it's, it's not uh, just some romance or chauvinistic, um, you know, fling that he's having. He's, he's deeply and truly in love uh, with these two women. So... Uh, that was that was one kind of refreshing thing. The only thing is like the pace. The even though it is this epic movie, the pace doesn't have to be necessarily as slow as it is in some cases. I can't really identify with the acting, even though I recognize that it's good. I can't really identify with it just because it seems so affected, and uh, it's really stylized. So. Uh, the cinematography is good also, but I don't, f again, I don't feel it's as good as Lawrence of Arabia for some reason. Uh, with, in Lawrence of Arabia, everything seems, even though it's stylized like this, everything still, still seems like it's taking place in the real world. But this movie, it's, I just feel like it's a lot more sets. It's clear that everything is done on like a soundstage and with sets and stuff. So for me, it, t it takes away from it, the fact that it's... Uh, that stylized like that. But there are some really good shots. I'm gonna include one shot right here that I really loved. It's in, on the one scene, on the one um, side, there's a party going on with all the rich, uh, you know, aristocrats. And as they're having dinner, a quiet suddenly and inexplicably comes over the room and then you cut outside and there's this mass demonstration of the workers. And this is right before the revolution. So this is the workers, um, you know, chanting in the streets and they're singing right outside this party because they know all the rich people are in there. And that was pretty, impre that was really impressive to me. And there are some, some similar things to Lawrence of Arabia with just the scale, the amount of people that are in these shots. No doubt they'll sing in tune after the revolution. <laughs> but the character is really sympathetic. Omar Sharif, also, who plays Dr. Shivago, he's, he's good, but it, once again, I don't like him as much in this movie as I like him in Lawrence of Arabia. In Lawrence of Arabia, he's... Uh, he's just... Yeah, <laughs> he's just excellent. I don't, know what, I don't know what else to say. So I don't know. So yeah, it's, it's got, a, you know, got good qualities. But it's definitely, I'm definitely probably won't watch it again. I may look at clips or whatever, but um, it's just not really something that I identify with. But I did make it through, I got through the whole thing, and now I can say I have also seen Dr. Zhivago. 
<laughs> Honestly, I guess I was hoping there was going to be a little more commentary on the revolutionary side and you know how society was shifted around because of this revolution rather than uh, the love story necessarily. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I get bored by the love story, but I did. So I'm not, I'm not claiming this as a definitive rating of Dr. Zhivago, but for me personally, I'm gonna give it three punches in the face. I recognize the quality and there are lots of things that I liked, but it didn't uh, inspire me to go out and buy it. All right, so, but I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in to my movie reviews.